is Matt Schreck. I am an elite AE and simulation product specialist here at CATI. And today I want to talk to you guys about uh, Simulia for SolidWorks, what that brand is, how it may be similar to you know, traditional SolidWorks tools that you guys might be familiar with, and how it may be a little bit different. So just a brief roadmap of what we'll be covering today. Uh, we're going to start off with a product overview of Simulia for SolidWorks and how it compares to the traditional SolidWorks tools. Then we'll jump into the capabilities and advantages of jumping into um, this product as well, uh, followed by a brief demonstration of a workflow on the platform itself. And then uh, we'll finish off with some examples and obviously Q&A after that. So please, if you have questions, comments, or you just think something's cool, use that chat functionality. Let us know what you think. Uh, we always love to see your feedback. So you guys have probably seen a lot of uh, communication about the 3D Experience platform. You may not be totally familiar about what it is, what it does, why it exists. So in a nutshell, it's a place to design. It's a place to store data. It's a place to perform all of the duties related to an engineer's or designer's workflow um, all in one location. Traditionally, all of these things are kind of segmented. You might have uh, SolidWorks for CAD and you might use you know, another product for data management. You might use another product for electrical and this and that, um, another product for CAM even. So the goal of the platform is to take all of the brands that Dassault Systems, which is SolidWorks parent company, take all of those brands and kind of put them all in one place that's accessible to any device that is on, um, that has a web browser, essentially. And we'll see a great example of that here shortly. But that's kind of the core idea is to bring all of this together into one cloud enabled sort of umbrella, if you will. So the way that I like to lay out the uh, simulation products that we offer here at CATI is more or less by job role. Now, this isn't the end-all, be-all. We might have some analysts who all they need is a lower end product, but in general, this is how we usually break it out. Uh, for designers, we usually recommend SolidWorks premium level product. That is linear static finite element analysis, and we have a kinematic motion solver built into that traditional SolidWorks desktop tool, which is really nice. Going up the ladder, we move our way into simulation standard, where we get into um, more complex questions. So in linear statics, you might simulate if something can be loaded once and survive, that's great. But what if it needs to be loaded 100,000 times, a million times, et cetera? That's where we'd kind of move into the simulation standard realm where we uh, look at fatigue. Moving sort of into more of an engineer's workflow, you again start asking the harder and harder questions. Well, maybe what's the resonant frequency of this structure? Bolting it to a motor, I need it to not, you know, induce any resonant modes. Or what does my thermal performance look like? Or can I optimize this shape um, to be you know, more conducive to being manufactured with uh, high-end kind of manufacturing techniques, modern manufacturing techniques? So that's the solver simulation professional level where we start asking those kinds of questions. And then finally, we get into simulation premium and Dassault Systems Structural Performance Engineer and Structural Mechanics Engineer, which is what we'll be focusing on today. These two products kind of uh, blur and intermingle that line between analyst and engineer, where we can solve complex nonlinear style uh, finite element analyses, also coupled with some modal dynamics and harmonic responses and things like that. The Dassault Systems Structural Performance Engineer and Structural Mechanics Engineer roles um, are essentially abacus on the cloud, for lack of a, a better term, right? Dassault Systems Simulia brand consists of the abacus FEA solver, CST electromagnetic suite. You guys might have caught the presentation a few minutes ago um, talking about that, um, as well as iSight and Tosca and a number of other simulation focused brands. So what they're trying to do is use um, the platform to enable that abacus computation um, to, like I said, any device with an internet connection. So I like to draw the parallel between the SolidWorks simulation product packaging and the um, 
the packaging for Simulia for SOLIDWORKS. So on the left side of my screen, you can see the SOLIDWORKS Premium, Professional, uh, Simulation Professional, Simulation Premium. You can see how all those are kind of broken out and their capabilities there. Dassault Systems has taken a very similar approach on the flip side of this coin with the Simulia for SOLIDWORKS. Right? We have broken it out into kind of four discrete chunks of capabilities, if you will. Um, the intro level capability being the structural designer role. So this is more or less like a SOLIDWORKS simulation professional. We can do linear static structural analysis. We can do some frequency studies, um, eigenvalue buckling, as well as structural thermal analysis as well. All of these roles come with a cloud-enabled computation. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a few minutes. Um, but they all have the ability to be solved on the cloud. Next up the chain, we have structural engineer, where this starts to get into some of the linear dynamics capabilities of SOLIDWORKS simulation premium. Um, but it takes it a step further in that we can have advanced mesh types, advanced mesh elements. Excuse me, we'll be looking at that here in just a few moments, as well as multi-step analysis, which um, those of you who might have logged on a little bit earlier, you might have heard Bill and I talking about that. Um, then we move into the structural performance engineer and structural mechanics engineer. And these are kind of the two core, what I would call flagship products that exist on the platform. They can do everything that SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium can do, plus more. Um, one of the big things that differentiates them is the general contact. It's a powerful contact algorithm um, that is actually incredibly easy to apply and essentially puts a, um, a contact definition between every surface in the model automatically um, and then does a really great job of solving it. We also gain the ability to simulate material failure. We'll see maybe a couple examples of that here in a few minutes as well. Again, something that um, SOLIDWORKS simulation tools can't really model directly. And then on the structural mechanics engineer side, we gain the uh, sort of flagship product of the Abacus solver itself, which is the explicit dynamic solver, the explicit solver. This is used for um, very fast, uh, high intensity events like drop tests and shock loads and uh, impacts and those types of things. And this has the added benefit of coming with the material calibration app. This allows us to import real life stress strain data into an application that will use um, some, some kind of clever programming, if you will, to best fit that stress strain data to a material model. Um, for you automatically. So it kind of takes the guesswork out of like, oh, is this a Mooney Rivlin um, style rubber or is it an Ogden style rubber or what have you. So it's really slick capability there. So transitioning into maybe some of the advantages and extra capabilities that Simulia for SOLIDWORKS offers, um, the first thing that most users will notice is the advanced mesh types. So SOLIDWORKS simulation will only use tetrahedral elements, either first or second order. Uh, the simulator for SOLIDWORKS suite will allow you to use that and more. It adds in what um, some call brick elements or hexahedra, um, but it also has a um, hex dominant measure, which is really neat, where it will actually automatically transition between hexahedral elements and tetrahedra in areas where, you know, you might not traditionally be able to fit a, a sort of brick element. Uh, it also offers smooth particle hydrodynamics. Uh, it's a fancy way of saying we can sort of mesh fluids, and you'll see an example of that here shortly. Um, and then there's also a fluid cavity feature as well that allows us to kind of um, inject a solid body with a, a certain pressure or velocity of fluid and see how the structure interacts. Um, so there's advanced mesh types, and then also this enables us to have more material models. So we now have material model, models for crushable foams. Uh, there's some models specific to concrete and even some models specific to geomechanics and like cohesionless soils as well. So a lot more advanced capability as far as material models go. We already talked about this a little bit, but the general contact, I can't emphasize enough, is a really, really great feature. So on the left here, you can see an animation of essentially a rubber bumper between two steel plates and we're squishing it down. And you can see how complex the interactions are between every face in the model, right? There's a lot of self-contact going on inside that bumper component itself that's allowed to slide and kind of 
deform uh, relative to itself, and also contact between the two plates as well. That was done just clicking one button that says general contact. Right? This is something that would be uh, difficult to set up in SOLIDWORKS simulation. Right? And we've talked about this a little bit too, the cloud-enabled compute. So this allows us to take our simulations and not overburden our computer. Um, computers are a little expensive right now, so if you're anything like me, you're probably going to be waiting a while to get a new one. And these simulations can take a significant amount of resources from your machine. So you're able to um, buy credits to essentially uh, solve your simulations on the cloud to unburden your local machine so you can still answer emails and, and do design work while the simulation is solving elsewhere. Um, it allows you to use up to 144 cores per solve, which is really awesome. Uh, there's not, at least my computer doesn't have 144 cores. I don't know of many off the shelf ones that do. Um, there's a great breakdown if you're interested in cloud computation and how that works and um, maybe what the break even point is. Uh, later today, um, they, they've shifted the schedule since I made this presentation, but later today, there is a uh, presentation by Marcel, and um, he will be talking about how the cloud has enabled them to essentially kind of break free from the chains of their HPC cluster. Um, so a little bit more about the capabilities and advantages. Uh, on the right, you can see the traditional Abacus interface versus the Simulia for SolidWorks interface. Uh, you can see they've streamlined a lot of the small buttons and bars and drop downs and everything else that might uh, be present in sort of an older user interface. So uh, take it or leave it. I'm one who thinks that user interface is very important, but there's others who might disagree with me, but I just thought I would point out the difference there. And also, as we've discussed, the explicit solver. Um, this is a, a drop test of my phone, actually. I wrote a great blog about that um, not too long ago. Um, I, long story short, I thought I would be clever and design my own phone case and 3D print it, and I learned that I should not design phone cases um, from this. So if you want to learn more about that, check out our blog. I'd be happy to provide a link in the chat to anybody who needs it. Uh, if you guys heard Bill and I chatting before the, before the webinar started, we were talking about um, sequential loading and using steps inside of the Abacus interface and um, Simulia for Abacus. This allows us to simulate really complex interactions using even kind of different physics, right? So I like to use the example here of a bow and arrow, right? Step one, we might pre-tension the bow string, which is essentially a static simulation. Right? We just take our uh, untensioned bow and put a string on it, and we get a small curvature out of the bow. Next, we'll pull that string back, right? draw the arrow back. And that will add more stress and more displacement to the bow, which changes its shape, changes its stiffness. Right? And then from there, on that kind of newly deformed shape, we can run a natural frequency simulation on that kind of new that new gradient of, of stiffness on the structure. And then we can use that natural frequency, um, as, extract that and use it as an input to like a modal dynamic analysis. So this type of simulation is not, you know, really something that we could do in SOLIDWORKS simulation because of the multi-step approach, going from static to kind of a, a second set of statics to resonant frequency to dynamics. Um, all in one big simulation, but taken in multiple steps is a really neat capability to have. So we're gonna jump into the product demonstration. This is just a kind of brief overview of how things work, get you a feel for what the interface looks like and um, what goes into our studies here. So what we're gonna be doing for this simulation is taking this tank that you can see on my screen. It is full of a fluid Actually, it's full of water. Well, not full, it's about half full of water. And we're gonna be dropping it onto the plane that you can see below it, right? So let's go ahead and take a peek. You can see the tank, a couple of brackets on top of it, and the plane here, we'll section it. So you can see the solid body that is representing the initial fluid volume inside of the tank. So I wanna walk you through kind of the, the 
the FEA model, if you will, we can show the mesh that I've created on here. You can see there's a mix of um, small tetrahedra solids on the brackets and larger tetrahedra shells on the tank. Right? And we can step through each of these. There's a tetrahedral solid mesh on the water. You can change all of these sides directly from that interface there. And then two smaller tetrahedral shapes there, the surface elements on the tank and the floor. Now we'll look at the SPH particles. Again, this is smooth particle hydrodynamics. And essentially what it's doing is it's taking that, uh, that tetrahedral mesh and it's converting it into what I like to call like a ball pit, like your kids might play in, right? And it's giving each of those individual spheres the properties of water. Right? So these spheres will be able to slide past and move you know, around one another with the density and um, kind of viscosity of water. I have a rigid body set as uh, my base to drop on here. As far as materials go, everything is steel with the exception of the water inside the tank. So now we'll set up the actual like simulation scenario here. We'll begin by using an explicit dynamic step. This activates the explicit solver for use in this simulation. First thing we have to do is enter a step time, how long we want this explicit solver to simulate. Uh, we'll do a half a second here. Usually you want to reserve explicit solvers for very fast duration events like this. Next thing we'll add is mass scaling. This is a technique that the Abacus solver uses to assist in the convergence of explicit dynamic analyses. So uh, there's a number of types of scaling that we can use um, for this type of study. So in this case, I believe we'll use uh, throughout the step. And again, there's a number of other types in here. We'll re-enter that kind of minimum time increment to control the analysis. All right, so now the step is set up. Next, we'll begin our initial conditions. This thing is falling from a specific height. So we're gonna select the bodies um, that are falling. So we've got the water, uh, not the floor, and then the two tetrahedral brackets and the tank itself. And they're gonna be falling with a velocity of three and a half meters per second. We just enter that in the box here. And you can see the arrows in the graphics area are now correct. All right. So that's all we need to do to set up uh, kind of the falling here. Next thing we have to do is set up gravity. Once this thing falls and hits that, we need gravity to kind of bring it back down and bring it to a rest. So we just uh, enter the appropriate values for gravity into the appropriate fields. You can see the yellow arrow indicating the direction of gravity in the graphics area. We'll accept that. And then finally, we'll just clamp that floor into place. It is a rigid body, but rigid bodies are allowed to move in Abacus and uh, Simulia for SolidWorks. So you have to make sure that you apply a, uh, a clamp to that. All right, last thing we have to do is simulate this. So we'll take a look at the solver window here and how the cloud computation sort of works. So once that comes up, We'll review the options for solving this. Um, we do come with eight cores of embedded compute, as you can see in the lower part of that window, but we can do this on the cloud as well, which actually really helps for explicit solves because they scale more linearly with number of cores. So we'll use credits in this case. There are also permanent tokens available for cloud computation, and we're going to use the full 144 cores. So this should allow this uh, simulation to run much, much faster. And then once we click OK, it's going to, in the background, um, the way I understand it is in the background, it kind of packages up the um, Abacus input deck, right? That includes the geometry and the setup and everything. And it offloads that to Dassault Systems Secure Server for cloud computation. Once the results are complete, you'll be notified um, and then you can just jump back in, open up your results, and no one is any of the wiser. 
about it. So let's take a look at some of the results. If we zoom in, you should be able to see the lattice kind of smooth particle hydrodynamics. So they're kind of laid out in a background lattice framework that is used to control their movement relative to one another and relative to the structure. Right. Um, we can take all sorts of data from these plots. Um, in this case, I'm just going to play the animation so you guys can see how the fluid interacts with the structure. I've made the structure transparent so you can see how those particles move inside of the tank when it's being dropped. But we can plot other things as well. So here's a displacement plot. The structure is not transparent here, but it's handy to be able to see um, the displacement. Now, all the traditional things you might expect out of any you know, FEA tool, these are velocity vectors at every node in the model. I think these types of plots look really good. I really like how post-processing is done um, in the Simulator for SOLIDWORKS brain. It's very easy to switch between result quantities, um, even though the view manipulation is a little different than SOLIDWORKS. It took me a little bit to get used to it here. Um, but this is a plastic strain plot um, where it only shows um, strain over the yield stress. Right? Uh, we can also plot factor of safety as well. And I really like the way they do factor of safety plots here. I have a little graphical funniness happening with that um, internal structure there. So let me just jump to the end point here. There we go. Right. And here you can see it's only showing us factors of safety, colors for factor of safety below two, which I really like. Um, other simulation tools that I've used, it just defaults the factor of safety plot to maximum and minimum stress values. So your default plot ends up looking, <laughs> uh, ends up looking like all red or all blue or something. These are the maximum and minimum factor of safeties for every body in the analysis. Um, they're a little stacked on top of each other, so I'll go ahead and turn those off for now. But yeah, I really like how they do these factor of safety plots here. And there's just, you know, kind of a never ending plethora of ways you can post process these results. Anyone familiar, like my colleague Bill here, with Abacus and how post processing works in there, all those same tools apply here you know, field and history outputs um, and all of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this simulation, I think it looks good, and I'm gonna save it. So what this does is it takes all my result files and everything that might be um, on my machine and it saves it up to the cloud. We've talked about cloud computing, um, but it's important to note that this simulator for SOLIDWORKS product, um, you're not setting everything up on the cloud. The setup is not done on the cloud, the model kind of prep is not done on the cloud. There is a light sort of native apps install that you have to use for the simulation products. So those of you who might have been in um, some of the other 3D experience uh, webinars uh, over the last you know, week or so, um, you might have seen apps like you know, X Sheet Metal, X Design, X Shape that are all in a browser. Um, currently, you know, the simulations are they're a little bit heavy to, to actually set up in a browser. So all the setup and post-processing, for the most part, is done in this native install, what I would call native apps here. But that doesn't mean that you can't view results on the cloud. So what I will do next is I'll just log in to my 3D Experience platform on my phone. And we're going to take a look at what data I can get from that analysis um, through the cloud here. So we're logging in, and we're greeted by my same dashboard that I was working on last, the tank drop. So we'll clear the intro message. And scrolling up, we'll open the physics simulation review widget. And it will load that simulation data. It's a lot of data, and I'm very impressed with how fast it's actually able to load this on a cell phone browser. So this is the displacement results we saw just a few moments ago. We can animate this, right? And you can see how the the structure behaves. We could swap it over to um, the von Mises stress plot we looked at. This one isn't transparent, but that's okay. We can get an idea of the, you can see the elastic wave propagation through the body as it drops, which you weren't really able to see with the transparency, which is neat. And we can go and look at that plastic strain plot I like so much, right? And I'm just manipulating this with my fingers, right? It is very intuitive for anyone who uses a smartphone. You know, you kind of 
zoom in with two fingers going out, zoom out, two fingers coming in, pan, rotate, all of that was, was really um, easy to do. There's all sorts of other capabilities in here, like transparencies. Um, you can take measurements. You can take sections of these plots. You can add annotations that will then link to tasks in the Anovia backbone. Um, so from my phone, if I'm on the road and I need to, you know, tell Bill uh, that, you know, this simulation's done or maybe that we need to look at specific areas of this model, I can draw annotations directly in this app and I can connect them to a task that says, hey, you know, maybe look at this or, uh, or I can post it to uh, a 3D experience swim community. So the collaboration backbone of this is really, um, really sets the, the platform apart from what you can do with traditional roles. All right, so just some examples here. Um, you can see on the left we have blow molding. So this is an example of the fluid cavity, which we didn't get to see in this study, but uh, it's a great example of how we can leverage simulation in a manufacturing sense. Um, you know, simulation is not just for aerospace anymore. So if you have manufacturing issues, you're looking to simulate you know, a lot of these advanced tools can handle that. Uh, on the right, you can see a, an, another example of the SPH particles, which is a bird impact on a propeller um, or a, a body that approximates a bird. And you can see how these SPH particles are allowed to kind of dissolve and, and interact with solids and each other in order to give a, a realistic, almost fluid-like response. Uh, here's a few good examples of the explicit analysis. So on the left, you can see a door impacting maybe a, a street pole or something like that. And all of the parts that are interacting with each other, that is a very large analysis. Um, on the right is a drone drop test. Those of you who attend our webinars frequently have probably seen me present that exact model. Um, so again, a great example of a drop test with the explicit solver and the general contact. You can see how the parts are able to kind of slide and pass around and through each other. Here's a, you've already seen the example on the right, but on the left is a wonderful example of the general contact. All I did in that model was click general contact and apply sort of a twisting and downward force to the center of that rubber material. And you can see how the, the holes on the bottom side of that collapse and they have this really complex sort of interaction. It's a function of the loading. Um, that type of self-contact in that amount it is just not feasible to do um, with SOLIDWORKS simulation. And then finally, and this is something we didn't really talk too much about, but I think is a real awesome differentiator, is damage modeling. So traditionally in SOLIDWORKS simulation and many other simulation tools, you can't, parts won't come apart. Right, the, the mesh always stays continuous, but uh, with the Abacus solver and um, similarly for SOLIDWORKS, we're able to give damage criteria um, to material properties essentially. And what that does is it says, all right, if there are, if there is this much stress or if these elements meet this criteria, then the elements will be allowed to separate from each other um, and you know come apart, which is what you see here on the left with it incredibly slowed down example of a Sharpie impact test. Um, and on the right, which is just a fan blade and we're um, putting a, a stick or a metal pole or something in there. So I'd like to kind of finish off by asking a few questions, right? Do you or your business or the company you work at, do you guys use a lot of prototyping, right? Are you trying to figure out these complex uh, interactions in physics by just building one and testing it and building one and testing it many, many times. Do you experience failures or not you specifically, but uh, do uh, your designs experience failures in the field, right? And you're trying to figure out maybe how these failures come about, you know, what the cause or what you can do to fix them. Um, are you using a lot of exotic materials? Like maybe you have some crushable foams or some highly hyperelastic rubbers or, or something like that that you need to be able to validate. Um, also, do you have strict design standards? Uh, it's, do you follow some sort of a design spec like mill spec or something that requires vibrational testing? Um, or you know, do you just need more insight to your design or, or do you make products that kind of push the edge of technology? Um, you know, if you answered yes to any of these, 
I would challenge you to just give us a call. Myself, Bill, and we have uh, a bunch of other simulation experts who will be able to kind of talk through your issues and propose the solution that's best. Maybe it's Simulia for SolidWorks, maybe it's just SolidWorks, maybe it's full-blown Abacus, you know, we won't really know. Until you get on the line with us, we're more than happy to talk about simulation. It's all we do day in and day out. So uh, I'd like to thank everybody for attending.